Oh, good. I wait, wait, wait. Are we streaming live? Hold on. Hello, everyone. It's Renee, the practical shaman, coming to you today from Palm Desert, California. And as promised, for the fire tenders and other people who are continuing to uh, hold us in prayer and ceremony over these holy days, I'm inviting in a guest, uh, Luzia Kroll. And uh, when I tell you that she's a really important person in my life, that would be uh, very important to say because, um, hold on, I'm transferring us over to the other group too. Because uh, she's one of the few teachers that I work with on a consistent basis. And the lessons, every time I think, okay, well, I've learned a lot, I seem to always have more to learn. So welcome, Luzia, to the I Am Winter Solstice Symposium where the conversation is continuing into the new year uh, to the epiphany. Thank you, Renee, for inviting me and thank you to all the people who are keeping the fires during this time and through this solstice. We also did ceremony for the solstice and it was very strong and very uh, sweet at the same time. So I hope that that's part of the energy that's coming in for this new year and this new decade. It's interesting because on the solstice day, I was sitting here uh, speaking to, I think I spoke to 15, 16 people that day and they were taking, they were doing, most of them did, a lot of them did journeys, Luzia. So I was going in and out of circular time you know, even though I was trying to listen with a half a ear when people are drumming and rattling, I was like going back and forth, back and forth. And for me, what I'm finding is that this is a necessary skill that we have to learn to be able to navigate more than one timeline as we approach the next decade. What do you think about that? Hmm. I think it depends on who you are. Oh, some people don't have to? <laughs> Well, I think some for some people, that would look like slowing down and becoming more centered. Other people, it would look like getting bigger and navigating more realms. I think it's a moment where we're all discovering what our evolutionary edge is. And I think that these times are making it more and more essential that we reflect on those kinds of on those kinds of issues right and one of the one of the things that we were looking at um in our in our spiritual work one of the messages that was coming through was around uh, us creating the person that we actually want to be in these times and for the upcoming times, how, how skilled we are in actually doing what we say we're going to do, presenting ourselves in the way that we actually want to be present in the world, that kind of um, moral authority that we're needing to have exactly because of what you're saying, how challenging the times are on every level, and that we know that we have a, a political system that isn't supporting reform. So that makes us on the other side uh, even more accountable. And so I think... Uh, uh, Whatever we can do in terms of our own reflection, our own spiritual practices, our own daily habits, our own uh, consciousness around how we treat ourselves, treat our family and our community, how we treat our planet Earth, those are the kinds of things that we uh, need to fortify in ourselves. And so in our spiritual 
work for this weekend for this solstice was about touching into that level of ourselves where we know who we are so that we can act in a way that we really want to act. Wow, that sounds like a really good undertaking. And were there some tips or something that you, you could give to the people listening? Like, how do they know that they don't know who they are? So how would they know if they didn't know who they were, how they were going to find out who they were? Yeah, well, that's why we do spiritual practice. And I think um, many spiritual practices help us learn who we are. They also help us learn who we are not. I, what are the forces that, uh, that we project that are genuinely ours? What genuinely in terms, genuinely in terms of being coming from our uh, essence self, what are the, our defensive layers? What are our intellectual layers? What, where the emotions tie them in and where we are on our own spiritual development, right? So we have to learn how to reflect on ourselves in each one of these levels so that, we're know, that we know that we're uh, in integrity with that highest intelligence in us. And I think that's an awareness. And I think that's one of the reasons that people are so attracted these days to spiritual practice, but more in the indigenous forms of spiritual practices and working with the plant spirit medicines because they help us to reflect on ourselves at all those levels. So I think for people who are inclined to plant spirit medicines, that's a really beautiful way to work with our own psycho-spiritual evolution and development, which is essentially about returning to our original self so that we can live out whatever it is that we came here to do, which is... Which is uh, in consciousness, finding a, a way to be a part of the universal current so that we are in harmony and synchronicity with ourselves, with our communities, with our planet, that we learn how to live in balance, right? Balanced. And in that way, we know who we are. And then who we're not. So in that, we can find our own spiritual alliance and alignment. And for me personally, I very rarely think about what I'm going to do or what I'm going to do next because it's always being revealed. So my prayer is always to be with my alignment with my own higher self, my own cosmic self, my own original self, however it is that we want to name it. Because that intelligence is way more advanced and creative than anything my mind itself could dictate. So my tip is that prayer that we, we, we offer ourselves uh, in that study of our own alignment, heaven to earth, so that that intelligence is activated and we work through that intelligence rather than trying to design anything more personal. I think you and I had a talk about that last week about where, um, where for personally where I can get out of alignment when is when I forget that the universe has my back, the universe has this. And if I only just step back far enough to see I can see where everything that I've needed and everything that I've wanted has been really taken care of. And it's only when I get into the middle of the mix, does it, you know, does the resentment crop up or the more human things like anger and uh, frustration and, and things like that. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about <laughs> 
creating a really strong alliance with our own our own cosmic self our own our own higher self so that that intelligence becomes awakened right so that we we are given a direction it's revealed all of that other stuff comes up right we're human we have feelings we have you know obstacles we have all those kinds of things so it's not about that i think that's that kind of stuff is part of what the earth plane is made of and we have to learn how to navigate that skillfully right that's that's part of our education about living graciously on the earth right but i'm talking about in the, the letting our letting our intelligence dictate our lives let it be revealed rather than trying to plan it hmm. there's know, a level that has to happen but on a bigger picture just to let it unfold to really have faith in our own intelligence that we're being guided that we don't we can relax we don't have to do it all because i think so much of what creates all of those conditions that you were naming is thinking that we have to do it and that we have to do it alone. And in fact, in my experience is the less that I think that, then the more I can just focus on what it is I'm doing. And I've seen through my own life, one thing just leads to the next. Nothing is stagnant and I don't have to invent anything, which is a huge relief. Right, so it eliminates a lot of that kind of pressure. Yeah, so that's, it does. that's that's more what I was talking about. And I think the other piece of that is for anybody who's actively engaged in in their own uh, therapeutic work, their own personal growth work, their own spiritual development, that they are and you are awake that you're already awake you're already on the path and i think sometimes we forget that we forget that we know we forget that we actually know how to behave in in uh, a way that is beneficial for everyone including our earth but we fall asleep, we forget, I forget. Then we have to wake ourselves up again. We have to remember that we already know and we already have that alignment. And that alignment is going to take us wherever we need to go. Hmm. Some interesting things to think about. Yeah. So when you go to Brazil, I know you're heading to Brazil in a couple of days, and I really appreciate you being here. And for those of you who are listening at home, uh, Luzia isn't doesn't do electronics, so she's on the phone. And and this was a big jump for her to go to Zoom. I mean, this is we're making we're making talk about Thank cosmic you. progress here. Um, so this is really good. I'm really happy. It, are you gonna? Is there when you go to Brazil? Do you take an intention with you, or do you let the earth? The, do you let the work reveal itself to you? Absolutely. I go there to replenish, to replenish. I go there to relax, to sleep, to be with my good friends, and to drink a lot of medicine, so that everything that I take on all year long gets cleaned out it's my time of clearing purifying and that's my intention is to do that and see what happens and also to reinvigorate myself and um, really use that force of the forest to rejuvenate myself and just delight and relax and and then work with whatever else comes up and it's a community so there's always things happening in the community and I always participate in all the com- you know a lot of the the community activities and in especially in the making of the daimi and hopefully we'll be able to make our sacrament while I'm there so that's always a really 
very special treat. And um, I work with a lot of people there. I treat a lot of people there. I give massages. I do therapy. I do all kinds of things in the community as well. So it's kind of this beautiful exchange because it's that's what it is. It's just an exchange. So no, no pressure in that way. That's nice. I talk about that as clearing because, you know, we take on so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how is this, how do you keep clear in, in your life? What did, what did the things you do to care for yourself that other people might find valuable? Well, this is one of them. I, I go for a month every year, you know, and, and devote it to that, right? To just bringing myself into my next level of equilibrium whatever that looks like. Last year, I, I actually, on the first day that I got there, I hurt myself. I slipped down my steps and I hurt my back and I had to spend a lot of time very slow, very right, lying down, sitting down, not doing a whole lot. So every year, I something else happens and I just trust that it's all for my own good so and it's a very um it's very energizing on every level from my body from my physical body from the force of the forest from swimming in the in the rivers and just absorbing that energy to the the spiritual work that uh, keeps me advancing on those levels to having really good friends there. So it's a very, very complete. So for me, that's what I do. I count on my month every year. And then I I have the supreme good fortune to work with medicine so that medicine keeps me uh, clearing all the time, all the time, all the time. So I don't worry about that stuff too much. And some people might not even know what we're talking about when you're talking about medicine. Um, I know there's a really big interest lately in the medicine kinds of work, but tell them what the Santo Daime, what, what they hear a lot about ayahuasca, but what's the difference between the Santo Daime and the ayahuasca? Mm, okay. So the Santo Daime religion has its roots in the ayahuasca tradition in that the man who received the doctrine of the Santo Daimi began his journey with the indigenous peoples in the Brazilian rainforest, drinking ayahuasca with them. And um, in one of his ayahuasca visions, he received the teachings to bring forth the new religion that was the Santo Daimi. And so through him, the the medicine itself, uh, the Santo Daimi, we call it, which is the two plants, it's the jagubi and the hyena, the leaf and the vine mixed with water. When it became the Santo Daimi, it became standardized because uh, ayahuasca is a generic name for a whole blend of different um, vines, leaves, tobacco, herbs, lots of different things. So the ayahuasca had it at its essence, the vine, which is at the foundation also of the Santo Daimi. Um, But the Daimi has just the leaf and the vine in the water. So the sacrament itself changed. And then it moved out of the forest, out of its more shamanic um, practices in its more elemental uh, elemental alliances into church. So we, as we say, as what I've come to understand, that the proper spirit of the ayahuasca evolved itself into the Santo Daimi so that it could move out of the forest and into uh, all other, all kinds of other areas both uh, in Brazil and out of Brazil, and maintain its same structure and integrity. So when Master Neo received the 
the doctrine from the Divine Mother, it came with the how to how to prepare the medicine and then a number of different rituals that we do so that um, it be, it began to take on a form that could be um, passed around and so it started in the in the Amazon rainforest and then because of the the great force of it and the being of Master Nail who some people say was the was the Christic energy on this earth at this time that he carried that Christic energy and for us it was also transmitted through Pedrino Sebastian who was a disciple of Master Nail's who received the, the doctrine. And so also through Padrino Sebastiao, we developed our own lineage of the greater tradition of the Santo Daimi. So the name of the Umbrella Church is the Eclectic Center for the Universal Flowing Light. So each Santo Daimi church is a member of the Eclectic Center for the Universal Flowing Light, and then each one has their own um, manifestation where cell the luz divina, divine light from heaven. So when the when the medicine through um, Padrino Sebastiao and Master Neil brought it brought it into the cities, it began to attract people from different places first in Brazil and then around the world. So people were drawn to him, and then they started a community in the rainforest, which is where I go, where I've been going for the last 30 years. And in um, nine, in the year about the year 2000, after Pedrino Sebastião passed over, his son took on um, the role of the leadership of this lineage of the Santo Daime, and through him it expanded throughout the world. So there are Santo Daimi points all all around the world now. E- everyone practicing in the same way with the same hymns. So matter no matter where you go, um you find something a ritual that you can go because the the Daimi the Daimi on this level is a T, but on another level it's a spirit. And that Spirit is bringing a new wave of consciousness and bringing back the memory of the wisdom of the plant spirit medicines and the mysteries of that of the multidimensional beings that we are that for a long time seem to have been forgotten. And I think that there is this wave of interest for a number of reasons. One is that we're in pretty dire times on our planet, and I believe that the queen of the forest herself is bringing out this information to save herself because, as you know, the Amazon forest has been endangered with the politics of the new president, and everywhere around the world our natural resources are being exposed. Exploited. So there is a, an urgency to bring awareness about the necessity to be good protectors of our and stewards of our planet. So I think that's one of them. I think that as marvelous as technology is and as uh, compelling as it can be, that there are also dimensions that are equally compelling that have been given kind of a back seat in our culture and that due to lots of other diff- different factors, are the emptiness of that is being felt. And so people are being called to do deeper levels of exploration with themselves. And once again, I think the plant spirit medicines and the more esoteric 
practices that have been kept underground, like the Kabbalah and various other mystery schools are revealing themselves, are coming forth so that we as a species can evolve because we've been evolving in one level in our technology and that kind of, those kinds of things. But in, we need to keep up on other levels as well. So I believe that these practices are coming out so that as a species we can continue to evolve as uh, the multi and understand our own multidimensional nature because that's what's needed in these times. We have to be bigger than just the mind. Wow. That's a little bit about, I think, the bigger vision that the daimi and the plant spirit medicines are bringing. Uh -huh. And in the same way, they bring that to us as individuals. There's no, no, no difference. We're, we as individuals, through our practices of working with the plant spirit medicines and the esoteric tr traditions, evolve as beings and are part then of the evolution of the species itself. We're doing our part for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, we have time for just a couple more um, thoughts. So what, what would you uh, um, give some people some hopeful ideas for the, this next decade that we're just about ready to approach? I'll tell you one thing that I've been thinking about and reflecting about recently. And that is about the cultural conspiracy to continually uh, create division within ourselves different layers of separation in ourselves, which then uh, radiates out to separation with others, seeing ourselves uh, differently, which we are, we're different. And on some level, we have many mostly common elements. And the most common element I believe that we share is love. That in our essence, we are love. And that somehow, through some kind of cultural, I can't think of anything else, but then like cultural deviations that like their consensus around these notions of love that have entered into our psychology, I think in a very um, kind of destructive way. So we have lots of talk about having to love ourselves or to love unconditionally. And for me, that is an oxymoron because if we are loved, then we can't love ourselves. But we've been taught that there's a separation between love and ourselves. Or that we have to love unconditionally. But if it's not unconditional, it's not love. So to ha begin to break down these even these kinds of really basic thought patterns that create the way that we see the world, but see it in a distorted way, in a, in a separatist, dualistic kind of way. So how to begin to bring another level of consciousness about who we are in our essence, truth, love, whatever those elements are that we radiate most with and create a language of embodiment of these, of these qualities 
rather than thinking that there's something we have to get because that becomes then endless and then we're never good enough. So to begin to just break break down those constructs so that we can just be. Well, that's a mouthful and a half. I'll have to chew on that while you're away for a month. Are you, um, there's a new program you're getting ready to begin in next year, not this year, but next year, I believe, or, but. Uh, no, yeah, next in 20, in 2020. We're going to start it in 2020. Yeah. Okay. And what is it called? Okay. So I have a program now that we call Adult Girls into Women Rites of Passage in the New Age. And that is a year-long initiation program for anybody um, from 21 to 60, who actually could be 21 to as old as they want, um, for ladies to have an initiation experience so that they, they can become an initiated woman. That is a woman who has uh, that mind, body, spirit alignment. And in this case, this initiation is from adolescence into adulthood. So the initiation that we're focusing on is from moving from an adolescent to an adult and recognizing themselves as women. So it's a, a year-long walk around the medicine wheel, and it's a, a whole interdisciplinary um, study based on the developmental challenges of each stage of development. So we start in the east with our birth and early childhood. We move to the south and work with adolescence. We move to the north. We work with adulthood and then um, in the, the, sorry, the west in adulthood and the north in, in what we call self-realization and then back again to the east where they do their vision quest and their initiation. So we... we Focus on the initiation of adolescence into into adulthood, so that we can assume ourselves as adults in the world, and in this case, as women. That's been a really beautiful, beautiful experience um, for all of us, and um, we we are in our fifth year, and next year we're going to start um, doing all all. Um, program reunions for all five years. And then I think we're going to start again in um, the following year, 2021 to 2022, and my idea is to do it in Joshua Tree instead of up here. So we'll see what happens, but that's my idea. So that's been happening for the last five years, and um, last year I had a, n another inspiration that came out, I think, first of my own aging process and being, um, well, when I was 60 and I turned 60, the whole adult girls into women happened, that inspiration for that happened. And now I'm 66 and a whole nother wave of inspiration happened based on my own, as I said, my own aging process, but many conversations with uh, women, clients, and friends who are so afraid of their own aging process and of getting old, quote, old, and what that means and what that means in their whole life and feeling uh, in many ways unprepared to meet the those kinds of challenges because there's a, a resistance, there's such a strong resistance to, the, to aging that it blocks the, the process of actually <laughs> um, 
engaging fully in it. So it creates a lot of distress, and I've discovered a lot of distress in these women because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. (laughs) It's going to (laughs) happen. (laughs) So... My my inspiration was, okay, let's look at aging graciously. What would aging graciously look like? How could we actually embrace that process? And then I understood, you know, even within aging, there's a whole spectrum. So for me at 66, I feel like I'm in, in my um, elder essence. Like, I'm not at elderhood yet. I'm in my elder essence. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, how would people good... find you uh, to find oh, out about your programs? Let me, let me just finish. So okay. the, the, the inspiration for the program then um, is to create a space where we can talk about that and we can talk about our fears and our concerns and how to manage them so that we actually have a beautiful aging process. And so the program is called Aging Graciously, an Initiation into Elderhood. And so we're going to have a combination of um, uh, medicine work. We're going to work with plant spirit medicine work. We're going to work with... um, Probably we'll have a, a sweat lodge. We'll have different processes and conversations and um, have our own coming out as an, as an elder, which will be our initiation. Wow, that's great. All right. Um, well, if people want to know more, you can reach out to me because she's going to be gone for a month and uh, we bring uh, Luzia to the, the lower desert. So if you are intrigued or want to know more about this work, you know, definitely reach out. And Luzia, I want to wish you a very wonderful journey and um, hope that it's just as beautiful down there and that you can swim and do all of those things. Because that sounds... Thank you. And I just want to say that adultgirlsintowomen.com is our website and we'll have a link to the Aging Graciously uh, Initiation into Elderhood from the Adult Girls Into Women website. Very awesome. Probably also my own website, which is integratingspirit.com, whatever it is. Yeah, Integrating Spirit. The website is integrating dash spirit, and it'll also have a link to the to this new program. And thank you, Renee, for your thought of having me on. And I hope that um, everything that was said today is some way beneficial for you and your own development. And I wish all of you a really beautiful solstice and winter holidays. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.